So Nina Parker, she just landed a role co-hosting the show Friday Night Vibes with Red Hot comedian Kevin Fredericks, AKA KF on the stage. And Nina has a fashion line for plus size women that is absolutely stunning when I tell you that it's great. So here's though how it started. When we have to define how it started. She got her foot in the door as a runner for TMZ. Her job at the time included picking up lunch and sometimes sleeping in her car to be the first to get tapes from the paparazzi. That was you, Nina, outside my house? Yeah. Now, <laughs> now Nina is living her dream and we just love her. Please welcome back friend of our show, Tam Fan member, Nina Parker! <laughs> And grown and sexy oh in every picture, there. every picture. <laughs> um, I know I can't wait because we're going to have a fashion we show sure with are. Nina's fashions in a little bit. Yeah. But I got to talk to you about Friday Night Vibes. Yes. You and Kev, you yes. watch movies and then you talk about the movies. You listen. I mean, we That's just a do dream what black job. folks do. <laughs> we just do what we do anyway. Uh, but you know, we, it's so fun and it is a good movie because it's all black films. Uh huh. And it really is just like, we do part talk show. So we have guests on from your favorite movies. So we'll have like Tika Sumter come on right. because she was in Ride Along. Right. So your favorite movies, you get a lot of BTS. She tells us what it was like. What to was work that behind with... the scenes? Yes, behind okay, the scenes. Okay, we actually have a clip. Y'all were talking about Black Panther and King Richard. Let's play the clip. Okay. <laughs> Kev, Wakanda is a magical place. It clearly is. You know, I have a theory for pretty much anything and everything. Wait, you, you mean everything? Please tell me more. I have tell a theory a that theory. in black culture, okay. we have our own vibranium, but it's not a plant. Okay. It's an action. Okay, I'm very interested in this. Getting your hair done. Oh, yes. That's vibranium. When you leave that shop mm. and that wig is laid mm. and that lace is melted, mm. can't tell what you, you know nothing. What you know about a melted lace? <laughs> chemistry between yes. the two of you. I love Kev. And the back and forth. It's like a dream job to sit around it and is. talk about your favorite movies. Yes, and listen, I, I have been on other shows before. Kev, we had been friends on social media, but had never met in person. How did you become friends on social media? With us? Well, we, you know, girl, just black folks following each other. <laughs> <laughs> he was funny. I was like, oh, you're like, funny. <laughs> I have a confession. Yes. I've never met Kev, and I follow him. Exactly, too. see? <laughs> what is that? It's that, you know what it is, is that Kev does a lot of like real life situations, like why do we do this type of comedy? Right. And you relate to it, especially. Well, I, he does a lot of comedy with his wife. Exactly. And I, I always, Melissa. Melissa, yes. so I always look at the funny things they talk about as a couple, but yes. I never met him. Yes, and I didn't either. So we did a Kim test for this show. Chemistry test, yes. that's a business yes. I'm chemistry giving, I'm test. I'm giving a lot of business. I, I didn't you know are, it either, I was just guessing. you wanna be on TV, get your notepad out. <laughs> we did it, we, what they do is they do a chemistry test and they test a lot of different talent to see who meshes the best together. So we did our chem test together and it was instant it was like my brother how do they arrange that it's literally like a room full of 20 people uh -huh. and it was split it was like 10 men 10 women and they would just pair everybody and they would put you with different partners it's like speed dating. it's like speed dating it's you know and so it can be really nerve-wracking and a lot of times in the industry if you're a host and you're doing a chem test with other hosts it feels very competitive oh. and the energy is kind of like so do you see the other people like yeah you, see, you well you don't watch their chem test okay. but what i will say about friday night vibes is when we went to this chem test all the talent knew each other oh. and we were in there we had such a good time the energy was never negative it was like the cookout I so <laughs> I knew from then on, I was like, this is going to be a good show because everybody gets along. Y'all have the best chemistry. And I was saying to the audience, this show is about people who've gone from the bottom to the top. Yeah. There you were at TMZ. Ooh, Sleep. <laughs> Ooh, child. I feel so triggered. No. <laughs> <laughs> so because sometimes the TMZ paparazzi are outside our door. Right. And they do pop out on you. And I'm like, wait a minute. So you're in this world. I'm setting the stage. This was what, 2006? 2007. So that's when like Paris Hilton was yeah. being chased down. By she Lindsay. got arrested that year, I believe. It was it was like a really big right. deal. Right. Anna Nicole passed away. Yes. 
uh, all, Britney shaved her head. Yes. So you were in TMZ World yes. when it was like red hot. Well, when, really at that time, they were creating a different type of media. Yeah. And I didn't know that at the time. And you know, I was in my 20s. Like I didn't know that this was gonna be a new age of media. And so I really now looking back was a part of all these iconic stories <sighs> and seeing the inception and how it happened and what happened afterwards and the aftermath. And so it was really interesting back then. I didn't know this would be a part of like pop culture history. Yeah, before they had the T, it was it, TMZ. Right, exactly. Right. So, exactly. Going to, yeah, so you're in cars sleeping, yeah. waiting for the cameraman. I had just moved to LA, child, and I was like, I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do to get in this, because I didn't know anyone. Yeah. I literally moved to LA. I had family there, but none of them were in entertainment. And I was like, how am I gonna start meeting people? And they had just, it was still a website when I started. It hadn't yeah. even been a TV show. It was just a website. They were literally in an attic in another building and they were trying to get it. And they were like, we need people who are hungry, who are gonna come out, who are gonna help us look for stories. So I was like, I'm gonna work holidays, I'm gonna sleep in my car, I'm gonna do whatever I have to do because I had been at a job I was so unhappy at for four years that was not an entertainment. What job was that? I was working at a call center. Like tele telemarketing? Yes, I was probably talking to some of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> We have so much in common. Yes. In addition to following Kev, I worked in telemarketing. Really? Two hardest jobs. I was a waitress for 11 days. Mm. I Not 11 days, Tamara! <laughs> 11 days. 11 days. Uh, 11 days at a steakhouse. They had me work the lunch shift. Them women had me running for salads oh. and gave me $1 tip. I was like, I, I, 11 days. I, I didn't even you give a absolutely notice. absolutely not. I, my daddy said, are you going to work tomorrow? I said, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so I quit in 11 days. So you were at the, I did that, telemarketing. Yes. You learn, but you get thick skin you with do. telemarketing you because do. you learn to take no you or, or hangups and cussing I've out. I learned is like these things that I thought were setbacks actually were preparing me for great. Right, right, right. Because I was so incredibly miserable at, because I had already gotten my degree at this point. Yeah. So I went to school, I moved to New York, I failed miserably. I went back home and worked at this call center to save money for LA. And it was only supposed to be one year, it ended up turning into four. Wow. And I was going to work every day crying. I was, people was cussing me out on the phone because I couldn't change their plans. And I was like, is this, it, what, what am I doing? And it, it pushed me right. to want more because I was so unhappy yeah. that my mom one day was like, you know you don't have to do this. Right. She was like, you could just leave. You could quit mm -hmm. and you can just try for your dream. You don't have to do this. I love that. And now what I love about the arc of your story is that in your 40s, all of these things are paying yeah. off because you kept grinding. A yeah. lot of people used to think by the time you're in your 40s, it's never right. gonna happen. It all caught fire yeah. for you in your 40s. And I mean, listen, I think the, the beautiful thing is a lot of people saw, have seen my journey because yeah. when I started TMZ, I was in my late 20s and I think people have seen me go from place to place and they've seen the grind and they've seen the elevation of my career. And you know, listen, we, we've heard a lot about this in Hollywood as a black woman, this is often a thankless industry. And so there are times where, you know, I would struggle, especially being, in 2007, a plus size woman on camera, that just was unheard of. You weren't, it was rare enough to have a black woman, but a plus size black woman, aside from Oprah, we weren't seeing it, right. especially a younger black woman. Right. So I got a lot of trolling before there was the word trolling. Mm. I would get, especially because I was very opinionated and people don't want you to be opinionated as a woman, let alone a black woman telling them what's going on. And so, and I would find that in regular life, you put that on TV and I'm putting, being put into homes in middle America who don't see a lot of women like me and they're offended that I'm speaking on behalf of black women and the culture and I do that unapologetically. Right. And so, absolutely. So that was really hard but it really gave me, but I had that thick skin from them costing the people. Right. And that's so what you wasn't gonna tell me nothing. <laughs> that's what it, you had the thick skin from being cussed yes, out and cussed out. I was cussed out every day. You ain't saying nothing but new. One of the things that I, I think that what you just said it, it hit a nerve because people become afraid of you, but at the same time, there are others who become inspired Absolutely. by you.